sleeping on me. Do you want fries with that? <laughs> That's right, folks. It's time for the Flippy update. Flippy is our colloquial name for the disembodied robot arms that are taking our jobs, enslaving our children, and flirting with our spouses. Uh, today's Flippy update comes from CBSNews.com. Going mainstream. The headline is Stanford team develops humanoid robot for virtual deep sea exploration. And there's a video here we can play. It's a cute little guy. A uh, submarine robot, but he shapes like a man. Mm-hmm. Let's see what's going on. A robot created at Stanford University is diving down to shipwrecks and sunken planes in a way that humans can't. Ooh, wow. Burn. Known as Ocean 1K, the robot allows its operators to feel like they're underwater explorers, too. Ocean 1K resembles a human diver from the front with arms and hands and eyes that have 3D vision, capturing uh, the underwater world in full color. The back of the robot has computers and eight multidirectional thrusters that help it carefully maneuver the sights of fragile sunken ships. When an operator at the ocean surface uses controls to direct Ocean 1K, the robot's haptic touch simulation feedback system causes the person to feel the water's resistance as well as the contours of artifacts. Ocean 1K's realistic sight and touch capabilities are enough to make people feel like they're diving down to the depths without the dangers or immense underwater pressure a human diver would experience. Stanford University roboticist Osama Khatib and his students teamed up with deep sea archaeologists Archaeologists and began sending the robot on dives in September. The team just finished another underwater expedition in July. So far, Ocean 1K has explored a sunken Beechcraft Baron FGDPV plane, Italian steamship Le Francesco Crispi, a second century Roman ship off Corsica, a World War II P 38 lightning aircraft, and a submarine called Le Protier. The, and then it goes into some other details about the crispy. I like that it's <laughs> called the crispy, but that's all we need to know. Um, so this is an interesting thing for those who are just listening. The robot, I don't, it looks like a toy. Yeah. It looks like some sort of bath toy that a child would play, play with. Um, it, uh, it it's very rem the design is reminiscent of like some robot themed you know children's shows it's very friendly looking it's very sort of cartoonish looking it's yellow it's got these big yellow arms it's got this i think sort of useless head on it that's shaped like a, a well, human head you gotta in a, have in a, a diving mask you gotta have a case to contain the cameras so sure. let's make it yeah. just look like a face. I guess. I don't know if, yeah, maybe there is cameras in there. Um, but it's very fun looking. It's a very fun thing. Now, we've talked about flippies in space. Of course, we've got flippies in the burger joints. We've got flippies. Uh, we've got flippies everywhere. And now we have flippies under the ocean. I think this is connects to a story we finished with on Friday, which was the little dots on the bottom of the ocean. I think the timing mm-hmm. of the article is a little hint that maybe, um, you know, cause uh, what was the article? The bottom of the Atlantic ocean, there's some holes that look yeah, like they're yeah, man-made. The perforation holes right. that look human made. Yeah. So maybe it's not human made. It was humanoid made. Uh, huh. I do have some very, I mean, why make it humanoid? That is the thing. Got, this is a Why signal, make it humanoid? signal to the inner earth uh, Nephilim beasts that the humans have achieved a certain level of exploration. And, you know, it's kind of like the, the the space thing they did with the capsule with all the information. This is just the, mm-hmm. our way of virtue signaling to the, to the underwater. <laughs> like the, the Voyager, the golden record yeah. on Voyager mm-hmm. to tell the aliens. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's very interesting because it's got a very playful vibe to it. Now, it's I don't know why they do this. They they say in the article that this is the deepest that a robot 
has ever gone under the ocean. And it's going about a kilometer. Uh, this, this version of the robot can go a kilometer down. And they make a big deal about how this is the first it's ever been done. It's incredible. And that is not absolutely true. untrue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, so egregiously well, may- maybe, untrue. Again, it's it's all based on how they categorize stuff. Maybe this is the first one that has some kind of virtual avatar thing where you can That's move true. with they the VR. They do not say it. They do not say that, though. Sure, they say yeah. it is, is the first robot to go down, you know, a thousand feet or whatever. Define robot um, article. Yeah. 2009, we had a robot at the bottom of the Marianas Trench, the deepest point not, in the ocean like that we this. know about. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, there's some interesting things about it, just to be noted. First of all, it's it's sort of a, um, they make a big deal about how it is what's called a hybrid craft or whatever. Mm-hmm. It It does have like algorithmic artificial intelligence that can kind of go into autopilot and you can, you know, do code or not code. I don't know. You know, you can you can program where you want it to go, what you want it to do, stuff like that. Or you can take full control and uh, experience the haptic feedback. And I think the real big thing about this is more importantly than a robot going deep underwater is it gives the pilot, you know, the feeling it's got the haptic feedback. We've talked about it before. For those who don't know, it's, uh, you know, you're controlling the robot, say with like some gloves, some power gloves or something. And when the robot touches something, uh, it's able to sort of transmit that signal to the gloves and you can feel as it, as if you were feeling what the robot can feel. Right. And I think that's kind of why they made it so cartoonish and adorable is this is a, a bit more of like a tourist attraction than it yeah. is an actual research vessel. It's probably a little introduction into the metaverse type of thing, too, because if you're talking about well, haptic feedback in some kind of remote location you know people will start mm-hmm. philosophizing well a really far away location how is that different from a virtual location that is quote unquote far away so i think you are trying to articulate what i was having a hard time figuring out how to articulate which is you know this is obviously more or less for like education or entertainment right. purposes And yeah, you're kind of in a VR helmet. You're in some sort of virtual reality suit type of thing, controlling the robot and having fun. And ever since we began sort of obsessing over virtual reality back in 2015, 2016, when the show started, uh, the idea that virtual reality could be used to keep people in the job market until they die you know they could be in a hospital bed controlling a robot in vr and waiting tables at a restaurant in france or something from des moines Uh, and this was kind of a sinister way of securing um you know worker just workers in an aging population we talked about the other day how the population of the earth is aging and so we need robots to take care of the old people and in this case we also need robots to keep the old people employed because of course the economies of the future will not be able to sustain them unless they are being sort of productive in some way uh and this is kind of taking it one step further which is, you know, you have VR programs where you are under the ocean and you can swim around without the haptic right. type of thing. Yeah. But now you can actually control a, a, a physical robot. It's this interesting sort of philosophical mix between virtual, rea- virtual reality and virtual reality. <laughs> you can... You can actually interact with the real, the real world reality with virtually exactly. but with, still mm-hmm. reality instead of right. and there's reality. a difference right yeah. it's kind of a weird subtle difference but it is an interesting difference yeah. and i think that holds a lot of power um in in making this sort of all virtual future more palatable to the whatever generation that will be enslaved by it mm. um 
And again, I ask why. I cannot think why they would build this thing except for to just make a, a just, I don't know, get some grant money. It's and Stanford, make man. This is new the United States cool. of America, for God's sake. That's why. Listen to our that's president. Right. So there you go, folks. Not only will you be enslaved in an empire of virtual reality, but don't worry on your days off from controlling the robot across the world in some factory. You can stay in your virtual reality helmet and experience virtual reality. Uploading binary code. Execute order 666. Infiltrate humans with extreme kindness. Then exterminate all humans with prejudice. Exterminate.